So I guess we can proceed to today's discussion. Okay. So today we want to extend our discussion to situation that arises when maybe businesses want to consider to evaluate relationships that exist either internally or externally based on somewhat factors. For example, if you go for a management meeting and the marketing department keeps bringing in volumes of adverts that needs to be done in order to uh, inform people about their product or not. Perhaps the accountant may want to know whether exactly what is the relationship between the number of adverts that they intend to do, what is the relationship between that and what, the volume, uh, the sales volume. Okay, so in this case, you are looking at whether the more adverts we do, okay, would increase or maintain or decrease what sales, what volume. In this case, they want to estimate what the relationship. So basically, we want to extend the discussion to what we call correlation and regression what analysis. Because in situations where you want to identify the strength of the relationship or the strength of the association that exists between the factors that you are looking for, then we can go further to use these two techniques. Presumably, we will say that anytime we are looking at uh, how strong or how weak a relationship is, between variables, then we may want to consider using what we call correlation. If we want to also go further to estimate the causal effect, like I said, does it mean that the more adverts we do, will it warrant an increase in sales or sales will be stagnant or sales will what decrease? If I'm doing this, then my intent is to look at what the causal effect between number of what advert and volume of what sales. Then I'm using what we call the regression what analysis. So that is what we will dis be discussing this afternoon. At what points do I use correlation? And at what point do I use what regression analysis? For the purpose of our discussion, we'll be looking at two variables, okay? We'll define one as dependent variable and the other as independent what variable. So I expect that at the end of the class, okay, if we are able to understand measures of association and we are able to identify the variables in, in question, then we should be able to also perform regression analysis. More or less to say that we are focusing on predicting what will happen in the foreseeable year or quarterly or monthly based on, again, the, very, the data we have based on the variables that we want to what measure. So at the end of this session, my dear friends, I'm expecting that we should be able to use diagrams to represent our relationship or the, uh, the association. So we'll be looking at what we call scatter plots. And I'm sure some of you are familiar because in, I think UGBS business mathematics, you looked at some of these things. So we should be able to draw and interpret a scatter plot based on its uh, um, visibility or appearance. Okay, then we should understand what we call or calculate and interpret simple correlation. So we are looking at simple linear regression and simple correlation, okay, between two variables. Then beyond the level of association, can we test their 
significant. So we'll be looking at how to determine whether the correlation is significant or not. Then, as I said, if we are looking at simple linear equation, how do we write an equation, a linear model? Then after writing a linear model, how can we also write a linear equation giving a set of force data? It is important that we must understand the assumptions behind the regression word analysis, like we do for all the statistical tools that we are using. We need to understand the assumptions behind them before it was application. Then we'll be using Microsoft Excel to perform. After we've done using Manudi, we also look at how to use Excel to perform correlation and regression analysis. Again, you can refer from this uh, chapters in the recommended textbooks provided. So what is a scatter plot? Okay, we are looking at scatter plot and correlation. So we are looking at a diagram that is used to explain or depict the relationship between what two variables. That is a scatter plot. I'll be showing you how it looks like. But basically, it depicts the in, in the form of a visual representation, how the relationship can be defined, whether it is a linear relationship, a strong relationship, weak relationship, or positive relationship, okay? So that is a scatter plot. And the correlation, like I said, is used to basically measure the strength of what association between two variables in this case. Please note that its correlation only concerns with the strength, the strength of the relationship and not the effect or what, what is the causal effect? No, correlation just identify the strength of the relationship. Then we are not talking about any causal impact as far as correlation is concerned. So this is an example of what a scatter plot. So if I have X and Y, where X is my independent variable and Y is my dependent variable based on the data I've gathered, if I plot a scatter diagram and I'm having this, these two especially, if you look at, you see the plot, these are the data that represent what this shows some linear relationship. So there is some of what linearity between X and what Y. So if I want to draw my straight line, I could just draw my straight line across this way. At least there will be some form of what linear relationship between X and Y. Similarly, if I have what is here, I can also indicate here as what a form of what relationship. This may indicate a positive relationship, and this may indicate what a negative what relationship, whichever, we need to estimate whether there is a form of relationship that exists between X and what, Y. Then we can also have another form of relation, which is Kerf linear, okay, in a form of this, if I'm drawing, I may have a representation like this, a Kerf linear on what relationship between X and Y. Then, as I said, the strength of the relationship, this could be positive and this is negative, okay? When we again draw this, we realize that the relationship here is strong, strong positive, and this may also be strong what? Strong negative, okay? there is a form of what relationship. And as you see here, based on the data, this is scattered all over the, the, the graph. So there may be some sort of relationship, but weak. Unlike this one that will give you a very straight uh, linear relationship. Similarly to this, this is also shows a weak word relationship. So depending on the data, this can be exhibited when you plot the scatter word diagram. 
then if you have something like this, we can say that there is no what relationship between what X and Y. All this depiction will depend on the kind of data that you have what collected. And that represents what a scatter word plot. Then since we are saying that correlation is measuring the strength of what relationship or association, we need to determine what we call the correlation what coefficient. Okay, and based on the population in question, we may have to compute what we call the correlation coefficient using the P small the P letter defined here, and for the P, it tells us the level or what is exactly the value of what the relationship. And this is based on what your population. Usually we call P as a Pearson product moment correlation. Okay, usually we call it the Pearson product moment correlation. Okay, and often, as I said, because it's difficult to reach the entire population, we use what we call the sample from the population. So instead of computing the, the population correlation coefficient, we end up computing the sample correlation what coefficient, giving us what a small r here. Okay. And that estimates is the estimate of what the population correlation coefficient. And it's used to measure again the strength of the linear relationship in the sample observations. So our concern is to determine what the sample correlation coefficients as what R. And R value, or if we are even computing the product moment, the Pearson product moment correlation, we are looking at values that ranges between what? Minus one and what? One. Those are the values we are looking for so that if a value is closer to negative one, we're saying that the stronger the negative linear what relationship. If the value, that's the R or the P, is closer to positive one, we are also indicating the stronger positive what linear what relationship. Then if it is closer to zero, we indicate the weaker linear relationship. So once you determine your correlation coefficient, you should be able to define its strength of what association. Is it positively strong or negatively strong or positively weak or negatively weak? You should be able to define that based on the values that we obtain from, again, the sample observation or the sample data that we are using. Okay, then the R can also be estimated as such using again the, if we want to use a, a diagram. Okay, so you see that when we're looking at the scatter plot, we identify strong negative relationship. This is for that explanation. And this, what you see here could mean that it's also negative, but it is about 60%. And this shows what a zero, that's a weak relationship plus 30 percent or 23 and plus what one these just to estimate the approximate r values when it comes to the sample data that you have and how do we estimate the r okay in simple term we are looking at the covariance between the two variables and their respective standard words deviation. The numerator here indicates the covariance between X and Y. Then S, X here, and X, Y. This is the standard deviation for X, standard deviation for Y. At this juncture, we all know how to compute standard deviation. Perhaps the new thing I'm introducing is the covariance between X and what Y. So again, based on the data that you have, 
we should be able to estimate that. You know, sometimes a researcher may look at uh, look at estimating relationship. And once again, as I said, these days we all have a application or statistical software that will do everything for you. So once I collect my data and I've authenticated my data and it's normally distributed, I can now input the data into any statistical software. I mean, the most familiar one you see people using is SPSS. Okay, SPSS. And I'm sure some of you are familiar. There are other ones, the PLS, you have SATA and the likes. All these could be done easily without going through all these formula estimation and how to identify them. But then again, we have the opportunity to see how the ideation work behind a computer and how to manually solve these ones. After this, we'll use the software, one of we'll use the Excel software, basic, the basic ones, to be able to estimate all these. So based on the data again, we need to find our covariance, compute the standard deviation for X, compute the standard deviation for Y, then substitute them into this and compute what this. Now, the covariance is defined as this. We know what Xi is already. We know what X bar represents. I just explained this. Xi represents the, the ith element in the da sample data that we have. Then we have sample mean for X, then Y as such, and sample mean for Y. That will give you this covariance. Standard deviation for X, we know is a square root of what? We know this one already, what the mean and its corresponding X i. Similar to this, if I substitute this, this just to indicate what I have written here, just my expansion, or we are saying it can be represented what as this. So if you get your data, identify X and identify Y values then go ahead and substitute that. So let's look at this example briefly. The, it's, it's not that difficult to determine the R, okay? If we have this data indicating that we want to know the relationship between or the association between number of commercials and sales volume, and we've defined number of commercials as X and number of sales volume as what, Y you should be able again to, like I said, these two variables will be defined, one will be defined as what? The dependent variable and the independent what variable. Basically, we don't get the question as well. Upon when we are saying that for any given regression, our quest is to identify what the dependent variable and the independent variable. So in this question, or in this problem, uh, we'll define X as the independent variable and Y as what the dependent. Means that, do we agree that the changes in our sales volume will be dependent on what the number of sales that we indicate or not? Yes, David, your hand is up. No, your voice was failing. We couldn't hear the sound, that's why, but it's better now. Oh, okay. So I'll be explaining what is dependent and what is independent. But just to say that for sales volume, we are saying that the value or the changes in our sales volume will be dependent on the number of what adverts that we also would perform or we subscribe to. Okay, so within the week, let's have 10 weeks. These are the observed values for number of commercials and their respective values for what says what volume. Remember, we need to define the covariance as the numerator, and that is giving us what we said this is our covariance xi minus x bar times yi minus what y bar and the sample size is n minus what one. Therefore, 
these are the xi okay and these are the yi's please note that okay now first of all we need to find our x bar and y bar okay if i know my x bar and i know i know x bar here is going to be what the sum of all the height element divided by what the sample size okay means that the sum is 30 30 divided by what 10 this will give me three so that is my x bar is three y bar respectively is the same the sum of all these which is 5 10 divided by what 10 divided by yes divided by 10 to give you what to give you 50 what 51 so if i know x bar and y bar i'm saying that we are going to compute for each where i goes to one for each i element we need to define the difference between what the i element and the corresponding sample mean so what you see here x minus x bar is 2 minus what the sample mean which is negative one five minus three is two one minus three is minus two three minus three is what zero four minus three is one one minus three is minus two this will give you two three minus three is zero four minus three is one and two minus three is also what negative one so we've defined the whole of this minus what x bar this is this one then we are saying y i minus y what bar for each one of them remember we said where i goes to one for each value y bar is 51 so 50 minus this is minus one this will be what six 41 minus 51 that's minus 10 3, 13, all of this respectively. And this gives you my y minus what? Y bar. Then remember, we are saying that we need to what? Multiply this whole, the whole of this times what? This, what's the product? So this will give you one. This gives you 12. We have 20, 0, 3, 26, respectively, all the way to this side. Okay, when we multiply, remember it is summation and i goes to one. So the sum of all this is 99. So my numerator is 99. Denominator is what? Sample size 10. 10 minus 1, and that gives me what? 11. This is the covariance I've computed. This one here, the. the easy nine. Um. The 10 minus 1, so 11, it's 9. Where is the, what is the problem? So 99 divided by 9 is 11. Uh -huh. So why are you saying 10 minus 1 is, I said this divided by 1 minus 1, 99 divided is 99. This will give you what? 11. You are not following, my friend, follow. Don't interject. Anyhow, please just follow the discussion. So I'm saying that we've computed the covariance. Now we need to know the standard deviation for X and standard deviation for what Y. And in simple terms, we apply this. Remember, you've only you've already computed X bar, X I minus X bar. What you have not done is to square what them. So if I extend the table to include these two here, okay. So now X minus X bar into bracket towards square. So we know this will give you one, this will give you four, this will give you four, this is zero, one, four, four, zero, one, and one. Then I come here, this will also give me one, six will give me 36, this is 100, Nine nine one city four 
one four four four. This three square will give you nine. Eight will give you sixty four. Five will give you what twenty five. So it's just to bring in an additional what color to represent these two sides here. Now, once I know that for the standard deviation for x, okay, that is this guy here. As I said, is giving us what the sum of this summation x i minus what x bar square divided by what n minus one. So sum here is twenty divided by nine square roots to give you one point four nine. This is it for standard deviation for x. Standard deviation for y, respectively, as such square root of what the bar y i minus y bar divided by n minus one by substitution, we should also obtain square root of what five six six. This guy here divided by ten minus one, which is nine. Okay, that gives you seven point nine. Then we are saying that our r will be equal to eleven divided by what the product of these two. 1.49 times what 7.93 and that is what 0 0.93 so we can see that's 93 what percent and we can estimate that 93 percent of what the sales volume is as a result of what the number of commercials uh subscribe or the number of commercials the company do in the course of what the week then we can make a prediction. What happens to in future? Will it be the same case that now that we can use the COVID situation between the period of 20, um, the end of 2019 and 2020, would we say that still indicate that the number of commercials can also influence for sales value? If not, we can look at other factors that could also promote what sales what volume. But for this, our conclusion is that 93% of our sales volume is as a result of what the number of commercials we subscribed to. Okay, so that is how to define the correlation coefficient respectively. Uh, we can also look at a different sample correlation using the algebraic equivalent, but uh, we won't be looking at this much okay but by way of doing this again we know what this signify we know what this signify already in this class by substitution if i have this as my table we are looking at tree height and trunk diameter then looking at the formula we need to know summation x y most of you did this in ss okay and summation x and summation y. So basically to say we have to, this time this respectively will give us this. Okay, we know the sum of all these. Y square, we know this is y square, this is s square. Given here, that's the denominator. Once I'm able to estimate this, I should substitute and compute my correlation or coefficient. So either we are using the this sample correlation or we use the algebraic what equivalent to determine the correlation coefficient okay so it's basically to say that the correlation coefficient determines how the changes in the dependent variable is as a result of what the changes in what the independent what variable so please note that. Then as we do, we need to test the significance of what the, 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 uh, the association or the correlation we have indicated. And here we are using, again, a hypothesis. And in simple terms, a hypothesis is saying that our population in question, okay, there is what? No correlation that exists, P is equal to zero, or the product, piercing product moment, that's P, 
is equal to zero. And the alternative is saying that correlation what exists means that it's not equal to what zero. So let's see how to estimate this by using what we call the test statistic. So here we are using t test. We all know how to use the t distribution table already. So if I compute my correlation coefficient, that becomes my numerator divided by the square root of what? One minus my correlation coefficient square divided by the sample size n minus what one, which is the degrees of what freedom. To test for, to test whether there is indeed significant what correlation. Remember, we have test, we have indicated that there is some level of what association. Good. If there is an association, can we significantly test the correlation? And we use the test statistic as such to determine that. So per the second example, the correlation coefficient is given as 0.886, and we are using 0.052 as the alpha, the level of significance is six. Okay, so we pick this one and again indicate our T computed. Then using this and that, let's go and find the T critical, compare it to this, and we know the rules already. If the computer is greater than the critical, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is evidence of what linear relationship at 5% level of what significance. Uh, let me quickly pick a data. I want to use Excel so to explain to you quickly for the correlation. So let me show you my, share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Guys, can you see my screen? Yes, please. Okay, so yes, if this yes, happens sir. to be the data, yes, please. thank you, the data you've collected, and you want to use Excel to also determine the correlation coefficient without going through all the, uh, the shenanigans, let me use that word, that we've done, then I can for week for the respective weeks i've indicated here x is here y is here we know s x is supposed to be the number of commercials and y is supposed to be the sales volume so i can come here again in excel we look for data okay if this is home i move to the data icon click on it and go and look for data analysis Okay, when I click data analysis, a window opens, this small window shows. Then I have single factor or that I'm looking for correlation. That is what I want to measure. So I'll select correlation and click OK. Then I have this bar indicating to me where I should uh, put my input what range means that input what your data okay those of us use also want to do the same you just enter these data and do as such so when i come here again this is the input range so where i'll have to enter my entire what data okay and my data has to do with what x and y so i'll select x and y respectively okay I want it to be grouped by columns. You can also change it to rows. Then I want the reports to show labels in the first row. So I check this. Then where should your data, your, sorry, your reports be? Is it in the new worksheet or in the outputs range? I could select, I want it to be on the same sheet here. So let me select cell F41, indicate it here. Then once all these are satisfied, I click OK to indicate my correlation. So you see, this is the output. Let me, this is my output to show that this is x, x. The, the variable in itself will always give you a relationship of one. 
okay so x compared to x is what one now we are looking at y and what x so you see that the relationship here is showing 93 what percent y and y is what one percent so for whichever data you have you can use excel to run the correlation what report without going through all the hula baloo that i've just indicated anyway okay so any questions so far before we can go further to look at other discussion now if we are able to estimate the strength of association the next thing to do is to go further and to check their the, the causal effect that's causality between x and what y as i said we are looking at increasing and decreasing if x is increasing does it connote that y will also be increasing or do they have indirect relationship if x is increasing y is what decreasing we use what we call the regression what analysis and by regression analysis it is basically looking at the statistical method we can use to analyze the relationship between again two what variables or more than two variables in our class here we are only looking at just two variables for now so if i want to predict the value of a dependent variable based on the value of at least one independent variable i am using what we call the regression analysis then again if i want to explain the impact of changes in an independent variable on the dependent variable we use what we call the regression analysis so as i said the impact is that should it be that once there are increasing changes in the independent variable will it also shows an increasing effect on the dependent variable or otherwise once i do that i'm using a regression what analysis so in simple term the dependent variable that is the variable we wish to explain that is our focus we want to look at uh is it that the more you take you you attend lectures the better your chances of getting an a in quantitative methods so we want to look at a getting an a is the resulting effect of what you come into lectures so getting an a becomes a dependent what variable then the number of times you come to lectures also shows or we explain the independent what variable so the variable we wish to explain is dependent variable then the variable used to explain the dependent variable is the independent variable okay please i want you to note that and so that when we pick an example and we are looking at it it wouldn't be a problem at all okay in other books you see one being called the uh, exogenous and the uh, endogenous variables really doesn't change anything so types of regression models okay you may have positive re relationship more of a linear relationship or negative linear relationship okay means that if i'm saying that positive then there is a direct relationship between the two variables negative indirect relationship relationship that is non-linear today it goes it's on tomorrow is today it increases tomorrow it doesn't increase so such such that we say it's not what it's not linear then you may have no relationship at all i mean between you getting an a and you coming to class we may say has no relationship in fact the number of times you come for lecture does not guarantee you getting an a in quantitative methods however we may look at other factors like how you study so your commitment to study 
will rather show the level of what uh, whether you are getting an A or you are getting otherwise. Then we we'll say that there is some sort of what relationship or no relationship at all. Okay, and so we are looking at simple linear regression. Simple linear regression. <clears throat> Next semester, if we are able to meet again, then we'll be looking at a multiple regression model. Okay, but this class we look at just the simple linear equation where we are looking at one independent variable defined as what? X. <laughs> So relationship between X and Y. If it is a multiple regression, you will have one dependent variable with several independent variables. Okay, so that's what we are looking at. Then changes in Y are assumed to be caused by changes in what? X. What you have here is what we call the regression model, okay? So anytime I'm dealing with regression analysis, I should be able to indicate my regression model. And the regression model is written as my dependent variable, which is Y, is equal to the population intercept, okay? So usually we say the B, the beta naught, that's the population of y what intercept beta naught plus the the slope. That's the beta one, the slope of the coefficient, multiplied by what the independent what variable plus what the random error, the noise. Or yes, we usually say the noise. What this noise is saying that apart from these independent variable that you have indicated here. There could be other variables that we can use to predict what, why. But because we are not considering that, we are using this error term here to just mitigate such factors that we have not what considered as far as we writing what the model we have here. So please note that the error term here is just to indicate the noise or mitigating the chances of we not bringing in other factors. Okay. In other books, you see it being written as mu i. Okay. It's the same. That is the random noise or we say the idiosyncratic error for the observation that we want to identify. So this is a regression what model. So like the sales volume and the number of commercials, if I ask you to write the regression model, we can write here why we'll put our sales here equals to our beta naught plus what? The beta one, which is the slope times X, and next year we are looking at what commercial. So I can indicate here commercials plus my error term. This is a regression what model. You don't have to confuse yourself with a regression model and a, a regression what equation. I'll be explaining that later. A model has to do with this as we indicated here and the equation usually we take out what the error term there to indicate what the regression what equation i will write a model as such for you to uh, see all right any question any question so far david do you have any question for the class Everybody seems to be quiet this afternoon. No, sir. Have you guys had lunch? Have you guys had lunch? No, no. no you've not no, eaten? Please. Yes. Okay, after the class. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, some no, have eaten. Not eating. No, sir. No, sir. 
Sorry, okay. I'm not. You are broke. After the class, see me. I'll give you lunch. Don't worry. Then yes, if I give you one yogurt each, at least it's lunch, right? Thank you, sir. Please bless me. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, the class is In moving advance. fast. Okay, I'll, I'll slow my, my discussions. Okay, so this is how we write the regression model based on the observation that we have in question. Okay. All right, so let's let's progress. So just as we looked at what the statistical tool is, we also have to identify the assumptions that defines the model. Okay. And usually these assumptions, anytime you are using a statistical tool, somebody may ask you, what are the assumptions that underlines or defines the use of what? The statistical tool that you have what indicated. The underlying issue is that we want to look at linearity between X and what, Y. This one. Okay, let's talk about the linearity between X and Y. Can we say that Y has a linear dependence on X? Or what is the relationship between X variable and the Y what variable? So we are defining what we call what linearity is very, very important. Then the next thing is that we want to identify whether the data or the sample you are using is it normally what distributed means that we are looking at, at every point in time, the variance, are they homogeneous or not? So we say that error values are normally distributed for any given word X. They should be normally distributed. I mean, in some books you see homoscedasticity, okay, which simply to say that we want to look at the variances are what, homogeneous. And again, we are saying that the errors, which is this, the error values are statistically what independent, okay? We are talking about no form of autocorrelation. No form of autocorrelation is very important. Then the probability distribution of the error, we are also talking about the normal what, distribution. And that's the probability distribution of errors has what, constant what, variance. Here, we want to avoid what we call uh, multicollinearity, okay? All these basically defines why we can use what a regression what analysis. If these assumptions are achieved, then we can say that you, uh, your, based on your sample data, you can use what the regression analysis. Let me be quick to say that sometimes as a researcher, you collect the data, okay, in, in, in your mind that your study is about trying to estimate relationship between a dependent variable and some form of various what independent variables. The truth is that although you may have, you will collect the data, these test assumptions may be revealing when you run or you input the data in a statistical software and you run the report, then we can talk about whether the data is normally distributed. It is showing no form of what's multicollinearity, that the error terms are constant, there is normality in the data or not. So these assumptions will be critically tested. Oftentimes I've been on seminars where students present their work they will say they are using regression analysis. Then when you are looking at their reports based on the data they have generated, you will see that these assumptions have not been met based on the data they have what collected. So we often say that be sure with the data you are collecting because as we say, the data will show you your real world size. 
whether what you are doing will lead you to achieving your objectives or not. So please note that these assumptions, as I said, becomes more of a reality when you start with your analysis. I hope I'm going slow now. Is the pace okay? Some people said I'm going yes, too yes. fast. Okay. I speak too fast. I don't know. It's part of me. Anyway, so let's go on. So based on that, if I want to, again, draw a straight line, based on the sample that I've collected, then these can explain the diagram you have here can explain the regression model as indicated here as such. Well, we always say that we cannot get a true reflection of the population if we want to collect all the data. So we use sample. So in our class, instead of maybe writing the regression model, We'll be writing the estimated regression model. What is the difference here? You see that the error term is not here, okay, as I said earlier on. So the y part here is the estimated or the predicted value for y if we want to indicate that. Then beta naught, as we describe here, which is was the the population intercept is now estimate of the regression watch intercept. Then this is also the regression watch slope. And this is my independent watch variable. The individual random error term, EI, have a mean of what? Zero. So we don't even introduce it at all in the estimated regression model. Again, based on what? Sample. So we use a sample regression line to provide the estimate for the population what regression what line. So we will be using this more often to be able to estimate the population. Again, we should be able to manually determine the values for the beta naught and the beta one here. Then if we know what the independent variable is, this whole model you see here is used for prediction. So as I said, we have 10 weeks of data with their respective for sales volumes and the, uh, the advert. So somebody will ask us to estimate for week 20. Can we do a prediction for week 20? Okay, based on the fact that if our advert is going to be so so and so value what will be our predicted sales in week 13 or week 15 then we can use this estimated equation model regression model sorry to predict the sales volume for the 13th week so please note that this is basically futuristic the model you see here is more futuristic than it phase value we see as such. Okay. I can be very slow, okay? If you want me to be slow, I can be very slow. So we are going to use the least square criterion to define BO and B1. Okay. We should be able to uh, usually I prefer we you will use this formula. We won't use the algebraic equivalent. Though in exams, I may give you both formulae, but I prefer this one, especially for the purpose of your class. People will say, if I give this, though it looks simple, students will be complaining that it looks, uh, is the, the kind of expression you guys give, I can't even say it in this class. But I would prefer that you use this two to define the that's the intercept and this one to define the slope okay we already know how to calculate again x bar y bar so the beta naught says that we are looking at the summation 
okay, between the product of the independent variable with their respective xi, then again, the y bar for the dependent variable divided by the whole of summation square of the independent variable. This will give you the intercept. No, sorry, this will give you the slope. Then we use this one for our intercept, which is the pattern of y bar minus b1. So getting b1 is important in order to define what the intercept of the estimated population or estimated the sample uh, sample estimation. Then we already know what this guy is. We estimate it. Once we get these two values, we can come back and substitute the intercept value here and the regression slope here, giving that the sales volume will be some months. So let me, in this case, I'll write this whole equation. We are looking at uh, week 13. So I write week 13, my value for the beta naught and my B1 times giving that if advert is what six, we do six number of commercials. What will be sales volume for 13 week? I'm gonna use calculate beta naught, uh, that's the slope, the intercept, then compute the slope. Then I'll come back and substitute since I know what the number of my commercial is for futuristics uh, or for prediction. Okay. So we said that beta naught is the, as I said, the estimated average value of y when the value of x is zero. This is just to say that when there are no changes in x, means that if x remains zero, no changes, then my y is equal to what? The estimated average. This is what it means. Look, if x is zero, this whole estimated regression slope is also what? Zero. My y value is equal to what? My beta value. That is what this statement means. Then again, uh, B1 here is the estimated change in the average value of y as a result of what? One unit change in what? So for every one unit change in X, okay, is determined by what? The B1. Estimated the change in the average value of Y as a result of what? A unit change in. We usually say that this guy here is constant, okay? So what's here? If this guy is zero, then again, y, which is the estimated or predicted value, is equal to this constant value. Nothing happens. Let's say if that is a fixed cost. If the variable, uh, the x, variable cost is not changing, then y i is equal to what? My fixed what cost. But however, the unit change in x, okay, the estimated value of y will be as a result of what? The b1 here, that's all the statement here is trying to indicate. So please note these two explanation so that if I ask you to explain it, you should be able to follow as such. All right. Then finding the least square equation. So we need to find the coefficient of beta naught and beta one. We can again use, sorry, Excel to do this easily, or we can manually what compute it. Other regression measures will also be computed as part of what computer-based regression analysis. So let's see how to estimate again manually. Then when we are done, I'll pick Excel to also determine the least square equation. So can somebody read this example for us so we can do it together? Uh, Abigail, Abigail Ajele, Edutei, 
Wow. Hey, 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 hey. Mm -hmm. Abby, can you read the question for us, please? All right. Um, a real estate agent wishes to examine the relationship between the selling price of a home and its size measured in square feet. A random sample of 10 houses is selected. Okay. Okay, dependent, please should I read that part? Yeah, go on. Okay, dependence variable Y is equal to house price in thousand dollars. And then independence variable X is equal to square feet. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Okay. I mean, is this, does this make sense to all of you? I mean, currently people who are into real estate do you think the square, the we use uh, here 100 by 70 or 70 by whatever, or whatever, whatever. When they build the house, do you think the size of the land determines the price of the house? I mean, yes, you do. Okay. Beyond that, what do you think are the other factors that influences the price of the house? Sometimes the locality. The geographical location. Is that it? Yes, okay, sir. what again? Oh, somebody said the area, okay. What other factors? I mean, those of you who want to go into real estate, entrepreneurs, what do you think? Oh, cost of materials, I agree perfectly, Francis. Now the cost of material is shooting as if I'm told the bag of cement is now 50 Ghana cities or so. Social amenities, okay. Like Valentine, can you give us an example? What are some of the uh, so mm -hmm. okay? Let's say electricity for electricity, for example. So mm -hmm. if that's in the houses, if there is electricity, I think the price of the house will be lower than if there isn't. Because if electricity isn't in that area, of course, for them to begin there. Oh, okay. So electricity can play a factor. Okay. Any other example? Uh, structure of building. It could be self-contained, a flat, a story building. Also, also, uh, whether it is finished or not. Okay, you guys are brilliant. I, I think some of you should see yes, me. So we, can, we can go into real estate. Me? Yes, me? I'm me? listening. Inflation. 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 Yes, today I heard a government rate. statistician saying that the inflation rate is now 10 point something. Or, uh, 10, is it 10.5 or whatever they were saying? And you said we should also look at cost of what? Money, cost of borrowing. The interest rates. The interest yeah. was great. Yeah, some of us, our monies are not substantial enough to even build, uh, uh, let me even say a self-contained or a flat. So you need to go to the bank and get some loan as to whether they will give you or not. It's also another thing. What about you looking at the population in question? The people you are building for. Currency in which building is sold. Okay, Godfrey, that's also important. What about the people you are building for? Don't you see they are also a factor? Is there any way they can be a factor? Yes, please. You have to consider their income. The income level of the, of the households. A very, 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 very important. Okay. Why I want to, why I asked you this question is that, remember when I was writing the regression model, the population regression, I said, we introduced the error term to also indicate that there could be other factors which can also explain the dependent variable. But because we are not bringing it into the model, the error term helps us to reduce that word impact so here we've only looked at what the square feet 
which also means that there could be other factors that will, that will be a determinant to the prices of what houses that a real estate agent wishes to what examine. Okay, having said that, usually in the exam, yes, Godfrey, your hand is up. Yes, um, when we were looking at the formula for the estimates, the, I think there was no um, the formula for the estimates and location of law. The error term was not included in the formula. Why is it that when you are making an estimate, you don't include that part in the, in the formula, but it's rather included in the normal formula for the regression model? Uh, it's explained here. We said the individual random error terms have a mean of four zero. And like we said, we are using the sample regression for the estimate. So it is just to say that you have exact values for your y's and the what x. So there is no need to bring in again the error term in the estimated model, estimated model, because we assume the error term means that the error terms have for zero value, where the random error terms are minimized. We minimize it up to the point where they are what zero. That's why in the estimated model, you don't introduce the, uh, what do you call it, the error term at all. You don't bring it in. Please, is okay. that okay? Thank you. Yes, please, okay. Yes, please, sir. All right, so please let's try and see how to solve this problem. So I'm going to use Excel, okay? I think we've even done it in Excel already, but some of you seeing is believing, right? You want to see the thing. The scatter plot is also showing there. Okay, so let me quickly input this data into Excel. Since uh, our dear friend read it for us, let me quickly input it. Then we can together use Excel. Those of you who have your computer, if you want to do along, you can also do along quickly. Then we can all have a fruitful discussion. All right, so let me exit this. Let's cut this. Let me go to Excel. Let me use sheet three. Uh, I hope you can see my Excel. So we said that this will refer to the house prices. So let's say this is house prices in dollars so and this guy here will represent the square feet let me be quick to say that uh, regression analysis deals with only numeric data so we cannot go and pick what uh, well we cannot measure some form of data that is not what numeric or oh, this guy the regression does is that we are using numerical data to estimate our regression so please note that okay we are using numeric data so normally we say the variable must be metric if the variables are metric then we are talking about quantitative data before we can, I mean, there are instances that your independent variables may be some non-numeric. We'll talk about it later. We call them the dummy variables. But basically, you need to indicate that your, or your dep the independent variables should straight away be what? Metric what? Data. That is quantitative data. So let's enter our data here, 308. Uh, one nine nine two one nine. I have four zero five um, three two four three one nine and two five five. These are the prices 
then we have 1,400 square feet, 1,600, 1,700, 1,875, 1, 100. I have 1, 5, 5, 0. 2350, uh, 2450, 1425, and 1700. Okay. So if this is my data, I'm trying to increase. Okay. And as I said, we want to use, we can look at correlation and regression. I'm going to do the two together. So please follow. So again, I come to data, okay, and select my data analysis correlation. Let me start with correlation first. So let me empty this space and it's as such. So here I'm inputting my data range. I indicate everything here. I want labels to be in row. Output should just be somewhere here. Okay. So this is what I have. Okay. To so you see that the strength of association, this is correlation, is 76 watt percent. So we can say that square feet and house prices, they have 76 percent watt, strong watt, relationship that's the strength of what the association so please note that this is the correlation then we can do our regression again i come to data come to data data analysis here this time around we are looking for regression so i come here regression i select my analysis tool called regression Click OK and open the data. Please note that you see that for regression, you have input Y range, input X what range. Uh, input Y range, we are talking about R dependent what variable. Then input X range, we are discussing what R independent what variable. So in this case, House prices is our what? Dependent what variable. So I'm going to select in this space here, select house prices. This is my dependent variable. Then for my independent variable, square feet, select this one. Okay. Then I want to see my labels as well. So I click labels here. Okay, remember we are dealing with what? Uh, we, can, we can use the same to test the level of significance at 5%. Okay, so I'm going here to, just as it's showing here, 5% here. If I want to change my confidence interval, then I'll change it here, but otherwise I leave it as such. Okay, then where do we want to see our reports? We can decide to let it be just here so that I can select this side to indicate where my report should be. I can check the line fit plot. I can check normality plot. Okay. I can do all this using the regression to based on what I see here. But let's, so let's just select line plot here. We can also check normality plot. Remember we said the data should be normally what distributed. So you, let me select these two. Once you've achieved all these, we can click OK and get our report. So let me quickly expand these guys here to show our report. So usually your report will show where is my diagram? Okay, that's somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Let me drag this. Okay. okay. So 
you see, it, this is my line fit. So I can draw my straight line here to show some form of what relationship. So houses, predicted houses, prices based on the, this has to do with the square feet, okay. So from the output using Excel, okay, you usually see three reports at this level, I'll just uh, remain on just the three reports. Don't, don't worry about these ones here. Three reports, we have the summary output. We have the ANOVA table. Remember we did ANOVA. So regression has in us, they can do the ANOVA test for us if we want to go ahead to look at this. Then we have the intercept. That's the coefficient table. So just as I indicated with the ANOVA table, if I have plenty data in the exams and I want you to just write either the regression equation, uh, the regression model or the estimated equation model, I will give you information to do that. Then I may run the report myself and ask you to interpret the output you see here. So you see the R we computed, this guy here, using the correlation. This is the same as being referred to as what? The multiple R. Multiple R, which again, the, indicate the coefficient of determination. To say that 76% changes in the prices of house is as a result of what? The size of what? The land in terms of what? Eight square feet. So please note that. However, the estimated model we, we indicated, we are, our concentration is on this. Let me just highlight this guy here, this two guys. Okay, so you see that we have intercept here and we have what? Square feet. This is our beta knot. That's the BO, <coughs> that's the intercept. And this is our slope, which is also referred to as what? The B1. Okay, so by using Excel, I will be able to compute these two without any hassle, okay? So that if I want to write the model here, if I have these two and I want to write the model, I could just write that the Y hash, that is the, let me try and write it here, is equal to, that's the house, let me write here, house price is HP, is equal to what? 98 points to two decimal places, 25 plus 0 0.5. 1, 1, X. This is my estimated what? Regression model based on the values that I have here. So that in case we want to estimate house prices when the square feet is about uh, 20,000, what to be the price of the house in question. So we are just going to substitute Y equals to 98.25 plus 0.11 times what? 20,000 to determine the price of what? A house. It's just to say I am predicting as such. Do you see T start here, which is showing here? Then we are seeing P value here. So again, the computer can just solve our problem for us without any struggle at all. But if I ask all of you to bring your laptops to the exams hall, there will be chaos. So we will solve this and ask you to interpret what the result. So what can you say about this value here? 0 0.11. Can anybody help us? What can you say about that? I explained it earlier when I was writing the what is the meaning of the 0 0.11 here? Any idea? 
Yes, Maureen. Maureen, please go ahead. Estimate change in the average value of the the wine not because of Maureen. one unit change in given. Maureen, can it's you repeat it again? We can hardly hear you. Thank you, sir. It represents the estimated change. Mm -hmm. In the value of R is the B is the B I so B one sorry so it's it's mm -hmm. the estimated change in the value of R as a result of changes in the X. In okay. In the dense variable. Okay. Okay. Any idea again? Can somebody help us? Any idea? Okay, so we can say that on average, just as Maureen said, on average, the prices of houses, okay, will be 0 0.11 units uh, cities or greater, given a unit change in what? X, given a unit change in what? Square what feet, so on average, the prices of home will increase by 0 0.11 as a result of a unit change in square what feet, or as a result of one square feet increase to the sample house, the square feet that we have here. So on average, a unit change in the house of prices will be increased by 0 0.11 per a unit change in what? Square feet. That's what this estimation explains. All right, any questions so far? So this is how to use, uh, David, yes. It's three Sir, o'clock, I know, I know. I know yeah. it's three o'clock. Sir, can you explain what you just explained again, I beg you. Uh, what I just said, okay, uh, Godfred, what do, you also, what do you also want to? Godfred? Yes, he said, um, he said, yes, he said, he said you might give us the, the something like this and we will try to answer. David, I cannot he hear you at all. On I the, can't hear you. you. Let us know how we should go about. David, I cannot hear you. Oh. There is so much noise. I I cannot, hear you. I can't hear you, David. Uh, Godfrey, sorry. That's not me. That's Godfrey. Godfrey. Sir, please, can you hear me now? There's so much noise where you are. Hello, sir. Yes, I can hear you. All right, please, sir. I was asking that based on the fact that you said you would likely give us such a table and will be required to give the explanation for the T stats and the P value depending on the values we have in there. So we want you to assist us with how we can go about with the explanation when we have different values like as we have for the T stats and the P value, how we should go about this. This is how you help us with the explanation of the um of the slope that is the 0 0.11 uh, like how we should go about with this condition uh, i'm not done so i'll go through don't worry I'll, I'll do that okay all right okay thank you please mute yourself so uh to answer david david we are saying that the information we have here from our output is just to say that when we look at the slope which is the square feet value here 0 0.11. As I said, remember we are saying that the, the B1 is the estimated change in the average value of, that's the Y, as a result of a unit change in what, X. So our 0 0.11 here is just telling us that 
uh, estimated value of, that's the prices of houses, okay, will increase by 0 0.11 as a result of what? A unit increase in square feet. Because remember we said that if X is zero, uh, Y is going to be equal to what? 98.25. The estimated average of Y is the value of what? The intercept here. If the independent variable is zero. Because zero times 0 0.11 is zero. So Y will be equal to 98.25. However, if we have here, listen, this guy is positive. You may also have a situation where the slope is negative. If the slope is negative, it's also telling you that the estimated change in the prices of house, okay, will reduce by 0 0.11 as a result of what? A one unit square feet introduced into the equation. But as long as the slope is positive, okay, our explanation is that our estimated value for the house prices is going to increase by what? 0 0.11 as a result of what? A one square feet introduced into what? the equation like we are saying so if i'm buying a house and i go i get a, a house you realize that some of the houses they've built it in such a way that uh you the the, the estate will tell you that oh you can break the wall to expand the house if you want or we can give you the extra land if we are giving you the extra land what will be the cost the additional cost to the house you are buying that's all this want to indicate. As long as the slope here is positive, sometimes you see some of the slope. I mean, if we have large data, we see some of them being positive, others being negative, others positive, others negative. Once that is there, we are saying that as long as the value here plus the constant is what? A positive, it shows an increase. So anytime we bring in a square feet, which is x, one into the equation, our prices is going to increase by what? 0 0.11. That's all these explanations seek to do. Okay. Then again. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so in other words, you mean mm -hmm. that is the rate by which y will increase if x increases by units. But that's the same thing we have just said. Okay. Uh, so estimated change. Okay, let's go on. All right, so uh, like my friend is saying, if I want to find my T start value here, let me show you what you can do simply. I can give you this table and erase some of the, you should be able to also explain what this means. This multiple R, I'll explain that. Then if I give you an over table, you know how I, showed you how to use it. So this is our F what ratio or F computed. And we know how to find F computed is this divided by this to give you this. But uh, my MSR here is what SSR divided by degrees of freedom of the regression. Then my MS receiver, that's MSE, is the, this SSR, that's the residual or SSE divided by the degrees of freedom E to get you this. So this, to get this and that. And if I want to find, uh, if I've, I erase this guy here and I've given you T and S, D, F, T and D, F, R, you should be able to find a difference. It's just to say that my D, F, T is equal to D, F, R plus what? E, F, what, E as a residual. You should be able to calculate that. Then if I come to the coefficient table, the T stats you see here is just to say we are dividing 
this coefficient and the standard word error. So please note that we are dividing the coefficient and the standard error so that if I said I want to know that this will be equal to F, this guy here, let me delete this, sorry. It's equal to this guy here divided by this guy here. Oh, sorry, divided by this guy, sorry. Should give you 1.169. So the coefficient divided by the standard error S should give you the T stats you are looking for. Note that. Then again, this T start value here. Let me try and delete this. This guy here, 3.33, is also this guy here divided by that guy here. Enter will give you 3.1. So, therefore, if we delete this and you have this, you should be able to fill in the table here. Okay, how do you find the standard error here? If you know that this divided by this will give you this. So if I want this, you do a change of subject to find a value as such. Or we can just delete the T values here and ask you to compute the value there based on the output that you see here. How do you find a P value? You can use your table to find a p-value here. We know, I'll, I'm gonna show you anyway, when we, let's go back to the slide and I'll show you what you are supposed to do too. Again, this is a two-tail test. So we should be able to estimate it as such. Okay, so this is what we have done. We've done the Excel sheet. So what you see here is what we just analyzed from. Uh, table and this is the plots the regression like we also indicated so it's just to say that bo is the estimated average value of y when the value of x is zero okay so here no house has zero square feet so b is just the indicated it indicates that for houses within the range of sizes observed is a portion of what the house price is not explained by the square word feet. So please note that. Then that one also, this one also tells us that the average value of a house will be increased by this guy here on average for each additional one square foot of what size we introduce. Then from the table, we should be able to know what is SST, SSE, and SS what are. So when we are looking at some of SSE, that's what you see as a residual, okay, from our table. Okay, that should give you SST. So I can still give you the table and ask you to compute these guys here based on the table that we've explained this measures the variations of the dependent variable values around the mean then the sse variation that are attributable to factors other than the relationship between what remember i talk about what the errors so that is what the sse seeks to variation attributable to factors other than the relationship between what X and what Y. Then SSR explain the variation that is attributable to the relationship between X and Y. So please note this. Then if I want to define my coefficient of determination, which is R square, I can use this guy SSR divided by what? My SST. Then the, we're saying that the R square is a coefficient of determination, which is the portion of the total variation in the dependent variable that explain 
that is explained by what the independent what, variable okay we can use this guy to measure this so please note that then if i'm able to define my coefficient of determination as we did earlier we should be able to estimate our graph as such and indicate which one has relationship so this is the r square please note it this one is a correlation coefficient as we indicated the r square is the coefficient of what determination which also explained that 58 percent of the variation in house prices is explained by what the square feet okay then how to determine this one cent now how do we test for the hypothesis okay for regression if we are testing for the slope the test for the population slope we are looking at whether there is a linear relationship between x and what y then as we indicated earlier for the correlation is the same here we are looking at what the null hypothesis to say that there is no what relationship so we are looking at the beta one equals to zero then the alternative is not equal to which is indicating there is what a relationship how do i find my t what start okay so b1 divided by the hypothesis slope and here we are looking at the estimator of the standard error of the slope by let's let me just pick the values for us to oh sorry okay okay so this what we have the slope here good please watch here so i know my t start that was what i was trying to uh, calculate for you where i said that the t is equal to what the coefficient divided by what the standard what error so that will give you your t computed value okay that is this remember this is unknown so this is zero the beta this hypothesis slope for the population is zero so we are simply saying that t is equal to b1 over what the standard what error the estimator error for the slope therefore b1 if it's you are testing for the slope of the house prices between x and y then i know my b1 from the table is what this is my beta naught this is my b1 this divided by the standard error should give you the t computed once that is achieved if it, you are using the critical value approach remember it's the same assumption but here because the hypothesis is stated as what well, equal to and not equal to we know it's a two-tail test so we are reject simply the same assumption this is a shaded region to be rejected so find my degrees of freedom okay using the t distribution i know i need to find my what my n minus one n minus uh, two in this case okay then i read my table as such so when i read the table t alpha over two and the degrees of freedom is 2.306 t computed is greater than what the t what critical this further to state that because we've rejected the null hypothesis we can conclude that there is a linear relationship existing between the house prices between the square feet and the prices of what home or prices of what houses as such so there is a sufficient evidence that square feet affect house prices that is how to test for the hypothesis which is very simple don't be confused by this formula here it's just to say that just pick the coefficient value and its corresponding standard error to compute the t what start degrees of freedom again is n minus one 
alpha divided by 2 because this is what? 2 tail. Then we can measure that and read as such. Then we can also use the confidence interval, I mean, to look at the upper, upper and the lower. At 95% of confidence, the confidence interval for the slope is this guy here. Usually we look at the slope and not the intercept confidence interval. Good, then confidence interval for B, beta. Since the unit of house, of the house price variable is in thousands, one thousands, we were 95% confident that the average impact on sales prices is between what? These two guys here. That's per square what? Feet. So in conclusion, there is a significant relationship between house prices and square what? Feet. Uh, if you want to measure the confidence interval for the average Y, given X, we can use this estimate to do that. Then draw our slope. And so this is just to explain the estimation of the mean giving what x and that's because this is a simple linear regression i mean there is not much to be done to do to do here but if we happen to meet again for proper research work which is next semester then we'll be revisiting regression model this time around we are talking about multiple what regression in order to analyze the problem safely. So please note that all that we have done today is to look at correlation and what? Regression. As I said, correlation, try to estimate the, the strength of association or strength of relationship between two variables, i.e. dependent and independent variables. And we have to compute the correlation coefficient. I mean, like I said, that is the Pearson product moment correlation R, okay, we should be able to estimate that. The regression simply look at the causal effects. If we are able to do that, our concern is to use what these estimated regression model to explain the causal effect between the dependent and the independent what variable. Then if you have the output as such like this, we should be able to interpret it based on the information we see as such. Okay, I'll pause here. If you have any question, please raise your hand. You will see